Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know what's missing in this world today? I'll tell you. <laughs> Mosquito repellent. No, manners. <laughs> uh, should you call a woman ma'am? Should you call a man sir? We're going to give you the answers to these volatile questions on the next Men Are So Smart. To say the modern world is constantly evolving and rapidly changing would be an understatement. And there are certain etiquette guidelines and rules that feel kind of outdated. Kissing a woman's hand when introduced, for instance. That's old school. It really is. You get smacked for that now. <laughs> is less than charming in the 2010s. To figure out how to best navigate the waters of etiquette in the 21st century, the Daily Meal reached out to five etiquette experts to see just how much things have changed. So during an era in which age and gender can be touchy subjects, it's still appropriate to refer to your elders as ma'am and sir. Should you ditch the BYOB gathering once you uh, graduate college or is that a perfectly fine way to cut your own party planning budget and ensure your guests have their favorite drinks on hand? Who pays for a date? Uh, how do you let your host know about food allergies? Oh, yeah. These are the most uh, more etiquette questions that you can even imagine. But luckily, we've got the answers okay. right here. So here are the answers. First of all, to the question, should a woman call, you call a woman ma'am? Should you call a man sir? According to the expert, um, depending on where you were raised, and if it was in the South or in a military home, you may use ma'am and sir. If you want to succeed, get that promotion, be well received by the family when addressing an adult that is older than you are, it is best to be formal until invited to be informal. I like that. That's a good rule. Yeah. However, she notes that if you don't wish to use ma'am or sir, you can use a more informal yet respectful Mr. or Ms. Okay, next up on our list, um, should you hold the door open for someone or has this practice gone away? You know something? I just did this today. Uh, I was at Jim Boy's Tacos for lunch and I was going into the store, but as I was going in, there was an elderly group of people that were coming out. So I could have just barged in and, you know, just rummaged through all their people. But instead, I just opened the door and well, let them out. That's it's the, the right thing to do. It is. Yeah. They note that this courtesy should especially be practiced for people who may be using a cane, pushing a stroller, which is a great idea to help, or carrying large items, regardless of the gender. Whether you're a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, hold the door open for the person who is close behind you. If you're in a group or walking a little ahead of others, be kind and open the door in advance. So today on Men Are So Smart, we're talking about should you still call a woman ma'am and other modern etiquette questions answered. Next up, when do you kiss hello, hug hello, and when do you shake hands? Ooh. Oh man, I'm getting away from that shaking hands thing. I'm really doing that bump. You should shake hands in a business situation. That makes perfect sense. Uh, with two pumps, and a three pump handshake is appropriate for social situations. Air kisses and hugs are greetings for friends and close associates, while a cheek kiss where your lips touch the other person's cheek, that's reserved for close relatives like grandparents. It's one kiss in the US and two or even three sometimes in many other countries, including those that are European or Latin. Uh, so this next one, boy, this relates to today so well. What are the basic guidelines for sharing your life on social media? Oh boy. Yeah, because I see people way, way overshare. Oh, I know. Yeah, so Jennifer Porter, a manners instructor in Seattle, kept her advice on using social media pretty simple. Rely on the grandmother test. Oh, I think I know what this is. Yeah, if you wouldn't be proud to show your Nana your latest post, the next time you see her, don't post it. Uh, uh, I mean, it's. I always used to tell people, if you wouldn't be proud enough to show your priest or your clergy or your, you know, the car, whatever the case may be, it's probably probably not share worthy. Yeah, 
Um, sharing your undying love uh, is just is something that doesn't belong on social media. You know what? What are you trying to prove? You're trying to are you trying to say, oh, this is my man, or this is my woman, I own them. Uh, what are you? It's a little, it's awkward. Don't profess your love to everyone. Just yeah. do it to the person you love. There okay. You How about this? What's the best way to cancel a date in the year 2018? Well, it's never great to bail on a date, but according to etiquette, it's all about making people feel comfortable and valued. So you should cancel by phone or at worst, a voicemail. That's an easy way to be rude even if you don't realize it. Please do not text any type of cancellation. A text is cheap in both effort and time. Invest in people to build the type of relationship you want. So I ran into this today, in fact. Okay. Uh, we were invited to a friend's house. We've been going out to my buddy's house in Rancho Marietta for 20 years for 4th of July. Uh -huh. They have a spectacular fireworks show out of Rancho Marietta. This year, 4th of July falls on a weekday. Yeah, I Tuesday. I think it's a Tuesday or Wednesday. Well, Vicki, my wife, has to get up and be at work at 4 a.m. the following day. And we never leave Rancho Marietta until about 11 o'clock at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a 35-minute drive sure or it so. Sure all the way across town. Um, and so even though I had accepted <clears throat> originally and Vicky said, I'll just deal with it, I felt really bad. And I said, you know, I called him and I said, hey, we can't, we just can't do it. Um, it's too hard on Vicky with her hours. Yeah. We'll, but you call. I did call. He had just texted me five minutes earlier, and instead of just texting, hey, by the way, right. we ain't going to be there on the 4th, yeah, Don't look for us. I called him up. Because it is, it seems like that requires something a little bit more personal. Yeah, I agree with you. So let's make that the rule from now on, okay? Don't cancel a date by texting. Yeah. Don't, even a social engagement. Yeah. Make the call. Yeah. All right. All right, next up. Who should pay for a meal on a date? Is this a first date? Uh, well, let's listen up. All right. So, who pays for a meal on a date? Well, according to Meter, it has nothing to do with gender anymore. Thank you very much. Uh, whoever invites the other person and chooses the location should pay. That's the key. Who invites? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now, but if you're just saying, let's have lunch, that's not an indication that you're buying. No. No, not necessarily. But if you say, hey, let's have lunch at, you know, Stamps Off Ground, yeah. for example, the, this is kind of saying that, hey, if you invite me to Sam's Off Ground, kind of sounds like you're paying. I don't agree with that. I, I don't like to get in that situation to where who bought last time? Is it my turn? Yeah. Um, I... You know, if, if we can, and this is just with friends though, so I like to just go Dutch, split it down the middle. Yeah. It's, it doesn't really apply to dates. We don't date much anymore. Our, our wives kind of frown on it. Yeah. Well, not on the weekends. <laughs> I don't date on the weekends, Ronnie. <laughs> Next up, is it ever acceptable to throw a bring your own beverage party? Well, one of the trickiest things about modern manners is that it's not one size fits all. Etiquette can be situational. And this is one because you need to know your audience. Historically, with formal dinner parties, guests expect the host or hostess to furnish all the cuisine and adult beverages. The hostess doesn't expect the guests to come empty handed as they may ask how they can assist with the planning or bring a small gift. Right. However, if the meal is a casual gathering or informal brunch, then it's a perfect time to respond to the question, what can I bring? With bring your favorite adult beverage. Be sure to explain whether they will be sharing it with everyone or consuming it themselves. If the guests don't ask about BYOB, then bring the topic up and tell them. It's all about open and honest communication. I don't think I've ever done that. Bring your own beer. Uh, I've never taken my own beer, but typically we just went to a graduation party the other day. Mm -hmm. And so I called him and said, hey, what can we bring? And he said, you know what? We're pretty much covered on everything. Uh, if you want to bring something, bring some chips and dip. There you go. So, yeah, so that's fine. You know what? You can almost always do that in any situation. It literally. You know, yeah. even if you didn't ask, just right. stop and get chips and dip. Yep. Jeez, not that hard. Okay. Oh, this is, I'm going through this right now. Okay. 
how long does someone have to respond to an RSVP? Oh, weddings, We've yeah. We just sent out wedding invitations, mm -hmm. yeah. And my daughter gave enough time for about two days. They had to think about it. And really, the you look at your phone and you go, I'm either available or I'm not. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take much longer than that. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, this is saying it's best to respond to an invitation within 24 hours. And that's tough. It is. You probably know whether or not you're go going to go after all. That being said, many times calendars have to be adjusted, coordinated, so it can take 48 to 72 hours. The main goal is to avoid keeping the host waiting as they must provide a headcount for catering, seating, etc. Be polite and RSVP. Hmm. I'm just, I'm curious, this wedding is going to be about 100 people, actually a little bit less. Some of the people that RSVP'd uh, have to cancel at the last minute. So I'm still paying for 100 dinners, but I wonder how many people are going to show up that did not RSVP. Yeah, you, that's just not a number you can calculate. It's or a, guesstimate. It's a wild card. Is it ever appropriate to bring a plus one without telling the host? Oh. I know some people who have done this in the past yeah. to me. Uh, I won't mention names. No. The answer is simply no. You can't just bring a plus one without asking. Be mindful, as a guest, that a host has a budget, menu, and other event considerations. They may not be able to accommodate additional people. However, the expert did note that if you've been invited to an event without a plus one, and you've become involved in a serious relationship or are newly engaged, it's fine to decline and let the host know why then in most scenarios, the host will extend the invitation to your SO. So this next one, again, 21st century, mm, I'm not sure. When should one bring a host or hostess gift? Like hostess ho-hos? <laughs> now that would be acceptable. You meant otherwise, That's perfectly acceptable oh, in the okay. 21st century. That's what I would bring. So this is another one, simple answer this lady says, always yeah god i mean i don't know never arrive empty handed we don't like to do that no but like you said we call ahead hey chips and dip but that's not a host no. or a hostess no, no. gift um well, you know ding -dongs? or what about the snowballs oh yeah with the, the white coconut, ones with yeah the okay first of that's all that's a good gift I hate the texture of coconut. Yeah. I can drink coconut water, Ooh. but I don't like the texture of coconut shredded coconut. I do. So I would never eat those. So you'd never eat coconut shrimp, I take it, huh? I, well, okay. All right. So, Found the exception. Yeah, I have eaten that. All right. Let's see. So we talked about how it's, it's always appropriate to bring a gift, but what is an appropriate gift? Well, we know the typical host gifts. Wine. Chocolates, gourmet cookies, decorative towels, candles, beautiful writing paper, plants, flowers, or a small toy for the child pet of the house. Aww. But if you can, put a bit more thought into your token of appreciation. If you're arriving from afar, it is thoughtful to bring a specialty from your location. Think macadamia nuts from Hawaii. Chocolate covered macadamia oh nuts. Oh my God, when They're I was in college, best. I lived on those. They're the best. Of course, if you know the host well, you can give something a little more personalized. Yeah, I like, think that's that, that's appropriate. Like uh, <laughs> yeah, not fireball so much. Uh, what should modern people know about thank you notes? Oh man, this is a touchy one. Uh, are email thank you notes okay? Uh, thank you notes are both a gift of expression and appreciation. It really doesn't matter what form your thanks take as long as it's sincere, prompt, and conveys gratitude. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. I, I, I agree a little bit. Uh, Porter said of the sometimes dreaded practice, everyone's parents made them do. Uh, that said, nothing replaces the beauty of a handwritten thank you note. A note is both thoughtful and intimate. Your handwriting shows your appreciation through yep. the effort it took to, yep. to if draft. If you still know how to write cursive. Does anybody? No. They're not even teaching you anymore. No. Uh, and send your thank you note. Take the time to show how much you care. Now, I was just watching a TV show. I wish I could remember which one it was. Oh, it was Life in Pieces. And the couple wrote one 
thank you note and copied it a hundred times. Oh my God. Thank you for. And then underline. Yes. Thank you for. <laughs> thank you for the gift. Uh, thoughtful. Yes. <laughs> How sincere and thoughtful. It's millennials. Yeah. I yeah. Know. All right. So what should one do with a cell phone or other personal belongings at the table? I know what I do. Let's find out what the etiquette expert says. It's been considered rude to put your purse, man purse, <laughs> cell phone on the table. It is also unhygienic. So what should you do? Well, plan to bring a small purse to the event and place it on your lap underneath your napkin. Uh, that's what I do. I've, I've noticed. Yeah. If you're uh, showing it off right now. Right. Yes. If a small purse isn't possible, and it should be, <laughs> and it should match your shoes. Uh, and many times it just isn't practical. God knows I know. Uh, then place the bag under the table between your feet. Uh, place one strap or both straps over an ankle to maintain ownership. Depending on the venue, you may also use a handbag to hook and hang it under the table. Really? Really? Especially if you're eating lunch in prison somewhere. Yeah. Gosh, I hope that never happens. <laughs> but if it does, I'll have the mango. <laughs> what? What am I talking about? All right. So now... You were talking about cell phones. Yeah. What happens if you need to take a call uh, or answer a text? Okay, let me dinner? ask. Let me answer that right now. First of all, you shouldn't. But in the event or unlikely event that it is an emergency, I would, I would promptly excuse myself, and I would go outside of the house or restaurant that I was in to take that call. I would be very apologetic when I came back in. Go on, Ronnie. Tell me what I'm supposed but, to. You know what? That's. That's pretty much right on track. And I, I hate it when people do answer their phones or text at the table. It just, you know, it's not, it's, it's a little bit rude. Here's one more thing. Is it rude to use your phone in a store? Not exactly. It's not rude, but it is annoying. Now, if you are calling a person and saying, did you want the 12 ounce can or the 24 ounce can? I can accept that. I would get that. Okay. If you walk into a store and are carrying on a conversation with your cousin from Topeka, no one wants to hear that. Don't freaking do that. Yep. Okay, have your conversation in the car, have your conversation in the parking lot. I don't, cr I don't care. Just don't do it in the store where everyone is subjected to your conversation. People, come on, it's common freaking sense. Now, I'm saying freaking a lot, Ron. This one is saying though, so let's say that you are a doctor or whatever. I'm a doctor. And you are expecting an important call. And I'm expecting an important call. And you know it's going to happen during dinner. I know it's going to happen. When so I what you should do is you should announce it to the table. Okay. I may have to excuse myself at some point. Mm -hmm. I have a life or death. Well, aren't call. you freaking important? There I go again. <laughs> aren't you important? So right. that is the that is the correct etiquette to use. Let's see. Is it ever appropriate? to eat before everyone has been served. This happens a lot at family dinners. Man. This is a pretty set etiquette rule that has gone unchanged over time. Everyone should be waiting for everyone to be served. The food is not going to freeze over waiting for the meals to be placed down. Not to mention it's embarrassing to dig in only to have the host give a welcome toast or a prayer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the exception is when the host insists. Then right. you will wait until nearly everyone is served before taking the even the tiniest of nibbles. You start too soon and you'll be finished before the rest of the guests. Yeah. Sometimes I can't help myself though. Bread, to, I love bread. Bread is like my crack. Yeah, and bread is, that's different though. If I see a dinner roll, one of those Hawaiian rolls yeah. sitting there, I'm gonna butter it and eat it and before anybody even knows I've eaten it, it's gonna be gone. That butter is so good. Oh yeah. Those butter tabs, yep. pads. Uh, okay, this one, I hadn't really thought about this because it's never happened to me. Mm -hmm. Is it considered rude to leave food on your plate at the end of a meal? <laughs> it's never happened to you, it's huh? never happened. I'm not sure how to, I would deal with that. <laughs> well, so. maybe you should read this one. I am going to read okay. it. Okay. While most Americans were taught to finish everything on their plates, almost everyone else, it's considered a sign that your host has not provided enough food to satiate your appetite. Beware. Oh. So they're saying that... Oh, hey, I could use a little more food here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it now. Uh, beware, it's often better to leave at least a little 
of your entree on the plate so that your hosts know that you had enough food. I hadn't thought about that. And now, uh, yeah, well, I just usually give a, a nice big healthy burp at the end of the meal to let that them know people that I've, know. I've eaten enough. Yeah, that sounds like you. Yeah. That's, that's you know, that's common sense. That's, com- that's etiquette right there. That's why men are so smart, because <laughs> we burp to show us that the dinner was really good. Mm. You know, that gets back to this thing. You know how weird I am about certain things, Quirky? No, I've never... I, yeah, I know. <laughs> you what? have to hear about it every show. <laughs> every freaking show. Um, I don't like to eat other people's food that, that they have cooked. I only want to eat my wife's food. Wow. I didn't tell you that. What about when you go to a restaurant? That's Somebody different. Else cooks that. That's different. That's their job. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. But when I go to uh, Sandra D's house for dinner and she makes something I don't like yeah. and I don't want to eat it, and I have to explain that I don't want that. I don't ever want to be in that situation, ever. <laughs> so, uh, I just went, one day at work, a guy brought in uh, these uh, cookies. They were cookies. They were like a cupcakes. I'm sorry. Yeah. They were cupcakes. He brought them in, said his wife made them. And so, Everybody there sitting around the table, like oh, before no. we before we go, everybody grabbed one, took it up to their workstation, and I bit into mine, and it had what I can only imagine was cat hair in it. <laughs> I think I just threw up in my mouth. It was, and needless to say, subsequently when he's brought food in, yeah. I'm like, I'm on a diet. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Your wife is such a good cook, it's my loss. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Those yeah. chocolate chip cat hair cookies were delicious. It's just not the same without the cat hair. No. No. Yeah. That's that, that missing ingredient. All right, so today we've been talking about should you still call a woman ma'am and other modern etiquette questions, and I think we've sufficiently answered them wrong. Answered them all. Yeah, so... Uh, If there's any that we've left off, feel free to leave us a comment. We'd appreciate that. Your comments are always welcome and are mm, replied to rather quickly, I would say. Yeah. Uh, You can find all of the information on mosquitoes and a mosquito (laughs) abatement on our website below. (laughs) We are coming to you from Stingrays Marina in Knight's Landing, historic Knight's Landing. Yes. And uh, we are on the river and we are battling the mosquitoes after a 103 degree temperature. But you know what? We're here for you. Yes. We're here. Other guys would have blown this off. And you know what? The mosquitoes were not out when it's hot. No. The mosquitoes have way more common sense than we do. They do. Yeah. But you've got common sense for bringing that ding. I brought the mosquito repellent, repellent but yeah. it's. All right. Well, look, we got to get out of here. Lou Gallagher. <laughs> Corvette Ronnie. Bye.